This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Heyman versus Williams. You all met in high school. You've known each other for 15 years. You're dating. And I understand that you all are looking for an apartment together. But whether you're looking for an apartment for one or two depends on what happens here today. Am I right, Ms. Heyman? Correct. All right, you've initiated this case. Tell us why. Okay, we're here today because Mo has two addictions, okay? One being strip clubs and the, s <laughs> the second being keeping into contact with his exes. Okay, this man literally goes to the strip club four to five times a week. That's absurd. Um, he claims that he likes their wings. Is, is uh, why he frequents. Up, yeah. oh, no, no, they, they do have good food. <laughs> yeah. They do have good food, so yeah. I've heard. I've I heard. that. You see, I'm like, how you know? I, I've heard they've got good food. <laughs> You've yeah. heard they've got yeah. good food. I read the reviews. They've got good food. Yeah. Anywho, so the wings four or five times a week. Yes, that's crazy. Um, and his exes, okay. Um, inappropriate, still in contact. They call ridiculous times of night, whenever. There's no boundaries, okay? The past needs to stay in the past. Right. I'm his present. He needs to focus here, and if he wants me in his future, he needs to get it together. So, Mr. No, but, Williams. Yeah, I, I gotta ask, are you going to the strip club for the wings or for the thighs? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Mr. Keller, I'm, I'm gonna give you some on that one. That, oh, was, okay. that was good. That was good. That was good. Nah, she, she know I go to the strip club a lot when she met me. We done been to the strip club together. She never had no problem when she with me. It's only when she not with me that she have a problem. Yes. She know I like the wings. I order the sweet chili wings every single time we go up in there. And you're saying that's just your thing? That's my thing, yeah. But you're saying that's as far as it goes? That's as far as it goes. But, but here's the thing. You admit, because we didn't get any clarity, that you have consistent contact with exes. Yes, that's correct. So you don't... Do you understand why Ms. Heyman has an issue with that? Yeah, I, I understand why she has an issue with it, uh -huh. but that's not... You know what I'm saying? Them is my friends. So I'm, she just wanted me to, like, cut them off, never talk to them again. Like, I, I just really don't... I mean, I don't, yes, I don't, that's I don't exactly that, what she wants. I feel like... <laughs> but, you know, I mean, every breakup doesn't have to go down in flames. You can just decide to break up and still be friends. Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't necessarily think you have to go, like, like you said, down in flames, but you need to have boundaries. And she's saying, you know what? If this person was like, you know, let's the three of us go to lunch, but calling it two in the morning, you being potentially at a strip club with one of them or out with them or going to their house or whatever is going on, that's the problem. Right. So something went wrong. What went wrong? Her insecurity. No. Oh. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. Well, it's usually well, something else that gets you there. So what got you yeah, there? Yeah, let me hear from her first. Exactly. Okay. So one day he, he said he was going to grab dinner with friends. Fine. I don't have any problem with that. If I was insecure, I would. I had no problem with that. What I had an issue with was when I called him to bring me some food, he did not answer the phone. Okay? So my women's intuition told me to go check his right, car. Here we go with the women's okay. intuition. That radar starts popping <laughs> off. Yes. So then what happened? So I went to his car, I opened the door, and I'm literally, like, hit, smacked in the face by this cheap-smelling perfume. <laughs> <laughs> but it... <laughs> I actually have... Oh, my goodness. Oh, look at you! You're doing yeah. too much. Now. I have um, some samples here that okay. I would like you, you both to smell. Okay. Okay. Um, so when you smell this sweet smell... What did you do? Did you go back and say, oh, no, explain? I went, yes, so I went in immediately uh -huh. and told him, something is off, your, your car smells like perfume, who was in your car. Okay. He tells me that basically I'm tripping. It's his air freshener that he uses. Ah, okay. the right. sweet, sticky air freshener. Yeah, some, I mean, I don't know what she's talking about, for real. That's all I could come up with, the air freshener. Somebody had to be a couple days ago, somebody, a friend, I don't know, but... I ain't had no girl in my Lots. car, so I don't know what she's talking Lots. about. But, Ms. Heyman, you were sure it didn't smell like any air freshener? It was not air freshener. Okay. So, right here I have for you all an air freshener. Okay. Okay. And then a cheap perfume. So, <laughs> I'm going to spray these on here mm. for you. I don't know what this is going to prove. 
We about to find we're out. We're gonna find out for we're, sure. Yeah, we're gonna find out. Yeah, we're gonna find Can out. Can you please, um, Ron? Would okay, you get that. that demonstration for us? There you go. I think All you right. can just sit So, right I put here. the coffee beans on there so that you can clear your palate in between. So, <laughs> they're looking okay. mm-hmm. All right. Okay. So, this is this. car freshener. Okay. That's kind of nice. Okay. It smells like a nice car. Yeah. Now, okay. Mr. Color, this is the part where you sniff the coffee, coffee beans, beans. Clean your palate. Actually, like coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Ooh, that's sweet. Uh-uh. Right. Like strawberries and egg. Definitely not. And like that would hit you in the face. Smack me in my face. Yeah, I'm not. There's a difference. Do you just smell it? I do. Okay, yeah. it's a big difference between car freshener and sweet. And perfume. So why does your car smell like candy, Mr. Williams? And more importantly, who did you have in the car that smelled like candy? I have nobody in my car that smell like candy. I don't know what that is y'all smelling or what she <laughs> on, but she she just be taking it to another level, I'm trying to tell you. Well, you know, I think it's very interesting, Cutler. We don't, I'm always talking about the sniffers. Miss Hayman had turned me into a sniffer <laughs> in my own courtroom. <laughs> All right, what else have you seen that makes you believe that Mr. Williams is cheating? So, let's touch back on these exes that mm-hmm. are completely inappropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I went grocery shopping, and I see um, <laughs> in the store one of his exes. She specifically comes to the aisle that I'm in, sparks up like this really weird, awkward conversation. Um, but it leads to her telling me that she's actually cooking dinner that night for my man, okay? She's now, cooking dinner for him? Yes. Again, she's weird. So, I kind of would have maybe give, given him the benefit of the doubt and kind of thought she was trying to get under my skin. Right. But that particular night, he did not come home until 10 p.m. Oh, okay. Right. All right. So the math on that one adds up really quickly. It, it was, yeah. That's a one plus one. <laughs> right. Mm. All right, Mr. Williams, where were you the night in question till 10 o'clock? I was with my friends. I was hanging with my homeboys. I Did never... you enjoy the dinner that this lady made for you? I wouldn't know because I didn't have no dinner. She didn't make me no dinner. You did not cook. go to dinner at this ex's house? No, I did not. I don't know why. I, I wasn't there, so I don't know what was said at the grocery store. I know she is kind of petty, so she might say something like that, but I, that's kind of pushing it. I don't know. That didn't happen. I was not with her. She ain't cooked me dinner, nothing like that. What else have you seen? Okay. One evening, okay, we're looking up apartments for us to move into. So, a nice little chill night, watching a little TV. Um, <laughs> he got up to go to the bathroom, okay? Now, usually his phone is locked, okay? I'm taking this as a gift from God that it did not lock, <laughs> It's okay? a sign. It was a sign. Mm-hmm. It was a sign. So, I took that sign and I went ahead and I looked in the phone, okay? You know um, if you look, you go fine, right? This is true. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is true. Um, so, when I look in his pictures, okay, <laughs> I see... One picture, he's like kind of laid up in a bed. It looks like some strippers are around him. Really questionable photo. Okay. okay. I keep scrolling, okay, and then I see the picture. He's standing there, and then there's like a nasty booty in the picture. <laughs> Just like a booty, which struck me as odd because you have of those pictures. a previous conversation. Yes, I right. do have those pictures. Would you please oh, get the God. pictures? So, we've got this picture. Oh. Uh, we got Mr. Williams. He's laying there, and then you got a woman in some kind of lace outfit. They have a matching... They got twin outfits on, Cutler. And he's laying in bed. Who are these ladies? It really don't matter who they are because... Hold on, hold on. Let me... Let me okay. Let me, okay. I want to hear this before me, I jump on. Me and her started dating in June 2018. These are pictures from 2017. So you're saying these predated you? Yes. But they were in his recent photos. It, oh. So kind of, you, you recall recent, them from memory? Yeah, like, uh, yeah exactly. Because I was recalling them from memory. Oh, I, yeah. The good old days. You remember the good old days when I was yeah. laying up with strippers? And, is this? Yeah. Here's the next photo. Okay, this is Mr. Williams again. 
and it's a woman standing there, and this is not you, Ms. Hamer, is that correct? No, that is not me, and... And that is another old photo. Is what he's saying. That actually looks like his ex. The ex at the grocery store? Yes. And that's how crazy it done got, because that ain't her, that don't look like her, that's an old picture, and if you go looking for something, you're you gonna find it. And she done, she... Well, she did find some pictures, interesting yeah. photographs, admittedly. And so but... why was this in your recent folder? Same thing. I was just recalling some old... I had brought back a bunch of old pictures. It wasn't just those. Them was just the ones she picked out. But it was a bunch of old pictures in there. Well, you know what, Mr. Cutler? There's the girlfriend side, there's the boyfriend side, and there's the ex's side. And we have her here today. Oh, Robin, would you escort her in? See, this is what I'm talking about. That is completely inappropriate. Go straight to the witness. Would you state your name, please, for the court record? Miss Tisha Marie Johnson. Okay, Miss Johnson, what is the nature of your relationship with Mr. Williams? Friendly, I'd say. <laughs> okay. Okay. Would you say? No, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> so we've heard a story from Miss Heyman that. She was at the grocery store, she saw you, and you came over to where she was, and you were going to be making dinner for Mr. Williams that evening. I did deliberately add to my car and approach her, and I'd said, this dinner's for your man. Oh. And I know that was wrong. <laughs> Thinking back, how petty. I didn't have to do that, but I did. Is this you in this photo? It is not. It could be, it looks like me. Maybe I forgot that we took the photo, but it, wow. it's not me. So, my question to you is, when was the last time you two were together? We hung out yesterday while Lauren was asleep. Miss Heyman, did you know this? No. What are you doing? What are you doing? Did you all hang out yesterday? We hung out, but it really wasn't even like that. She just, she, she asked me to come outside and smoke. I come outside to smoke. We walking around smoking, just taking pictures, video for my social media. That's it. Uh, we okay, look so like Hayden... Atlanta's cutest couple because then we got a carousel ride with the horse and buggy. Miss Heyman, you've yeah. got a strange look on your face. What is that? Because according to him, they don't hang out. Like this is what he tells me. This so I'm just a little don't confused. Correct. Mr. Williams. We ain't hung out in the, in the last two months. The only time we hung out was last night. And like I said, it really just was, hey, come smoke. And then it turned into something totally different. But we, like I said, but how we does didn't it get do there? nothing. Like, how does it get there? That's, that's crazy. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. You're welcome. All right, Mr. Cutler. Let me tell you what we're working with. We got car smell like perfume. She believes still sleeping with his ex. We've got pictures of women found in his phone. And we've got this testimony from Ms. Johnson. And for all these reasons, Ms. Heyman is sure that Mr. Williams is cheating. And she said, are you done if you find out he is? Yeah, he gotta go. He gotta go. Fortunately, this court has done a full and a complete investigation to get to the bottom of this. At this time, the court will call a certified polygraph examiner, Michael Williams, to determine, is he cheating? <laughs> Would you state your credentials, please, for the court? Yes, Your Honor. I'm a uh, former federal agent with over 25 years of law enforcement experience. I'm currently a polygraph examiner, certified in the state of Georgia, and also a licensed private detective. Mr. Williams, Mr. Michael Williams, <laughs> you asked Mr. Williams, since the beginning of your relationship with Ms. Heyman, have you had sexual intercourse with Ms. Johnson? What was his response to that question? Your Honor, he said no. What did the polygraph determine? The polygraph determined he was being truthful. You also asked Mr. Williams, since the beginning of your relationship with Ms. Heyman, have you had sexual intercourse with any other woman? What was his response? Your Honor, he said no. What did the lie detector determine? 
On this particular question, Your Honor, the lie detector determined he was being truthful. Look at that. That's crazy. He was telling the truth. I'm kind of glad, because y'all cute. But you, you have got to stop messing around. Either be in it or not. Because... I mean, clearly, Ms. Johnson has no boundaries. When people are insecure, it's because they are afraid. And you have given her reason to be fearful because you won't set proper boundaries with your exes. And, you know, these chili wings, I mean, they may be all that. <laughs> but she's... Let her make you some wings at home. Yeah. Yeah, she help gonna, her she figure. She's gonna cook a lot when you get home after these results. Oh. <laughs> Hello. Court is in recess, and today we're updating you on couples who vow to love one another until death do us part. But did all of the mayhem that came with allegations of cheating in their unions? In our first case, Sonia Collins' husband was an ordained minister, but she believed he was doing more than spreading the gospel with other women. After church, one of the ministers come up to me and say, ask your husband to stop calling my daughter phone after 10 o'clock at night. I say, what? I've tried to do everything right, and it's like it didn't work. Like the fiery darts was able to penetrate. One of my coworkers pulled me to the side one day. Oh, my uh, God. She's a stripper, mind you. Here she say, your husband asked me to do a private dance for. That's a lot. She was saying that the club that she was working at wasn't finished being remodeled or whatever. I said, well, maybe you need to do some private dances. Uh, uh, she's a stripper. No, I'm just trying to get my arms around an ordained minister telling a stripper to make some extra right. money for right. private right. dances. If it comes back that he's cheating, you're done. I'm done. I'm done. What were your initial findings? When Mr. Collins came into the room, he had an emotional breakdown. Wow. What did you conclude regarding infidelity during your marriage? He gave me no signs of deception. And so overall, I believe that Mr. Collins is being truthful and he has not cheated on his wife since they've been married. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Collins was faithful during the marriage, but has the couple worked past their trust issues? They sent us this update. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Cutler. How are you guys doing? It was great to be in you guys' courtroom. Since then, my wife has begun to listen to me a little bit more. But on the other hand, I did learn. Treat yourself, don't cheat yourself. And I want to thank you for that. Now I have one problem, and that problem is she has yet to take her test. And there's a lot of questions I want to answer too. Well, it sounds like they still have some work to do before they can fully trust one another. I'll say, and that reminds me of another case where a man didn't even trust his wife to cook him dinner. Ever since she lost 100 pounds, she started dressing provocatively, sneaking out at night, and putting stuff in my food. <laughs> Pork chops, I'm taking a nap. When I get out of work, chicken, I'm That's taking a nap. That's because he's tired. This, it got to be uh, South Peter. <laughs> You believe that she put saltpeter in the food to take your libido down? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Is that all you have? I see Negla J laying all on the couch and stuff. Oh, okay. Okay, she's in the bathroom taking selfies. To this day, I'm still waiting on those pictures. <laughs> Is this the maid outfit? Yeah, that's yeah. a maid outfit. <laughs> did you send these pictures to another maid? No, I did not. But I also buy stuff for uh, him so I can sing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> At him. He's sexy. Oh my God. Why would I want to cheat on somebody that looks like that, really? I'm from New York and I have never seen a black cowboy before. And he <laughs> had on a cowboy hat. <laughs> if you find out she is cheating, the marriage is over. Uh, it's 25 years has gone down the drain. Gone Boy, down I the really... drain. You look a little nervous. <laughs> Are you nervous? <laughs> I'm just upset about it, so I'm just. It's just bothering me. Have you had sexual intercourse with any man other than Mr. Williams? What was her response? She said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that she was being truthful, Your Honor. I told you. I told you. I told you. I told you. <laughs> so did this Texas couple get back in the saddle? They can tell you better than we can. 
Howdy, y'all. This, Hi, y'all. This is Tasha and Anthony from Texas sending y'all Texas size update. As you can see, me and Anthony are still together. And uh, she let me decide to be the man of the family sometime. Because <laughs> I got a cow girl. From now on, we decided we're going to go on date nights and oh, yes. go on trips. We've been together for 25 years and we hope to be together 25 more, just like the couples. <laughs> I'm glad they put the past behind them. And you know date night always puts a smile on my face. But in this next case, a date night led to marriage and mistrust and they ended up right here. Uh-huh. She was on the sofa like this. All right. She's naked. I walk in. And what does she do? She covers herself up and closes the laptop. So what do you think she's doing? She said she was taking the modeling pictures, so she left the room. I open up the laptop, and it wasn't the camera background. It was actually a video chat background. And so you believe she was having a video chat with another man? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, I was nude on the couch taking pictures. When you apply to a modeling job, you have to submit candid photos of yourself so that they can see what you look like to get hired for the paying job. Was Miss LeBeau building her modeling career or was she laying down a career as a video chat vixen? I can't call it. Stay tuned for an update on the LeBeaux and more cases of marriage mayhem when Couples Court continues. Welcome back. We're in the midst of another special update episode of Couples Court. Today, we're taking a look back at cases with couples who have entered one of the most challenging partnerships there is, marriage. Before the break, Ms. LeBeau's husband accused her of using her modeling career as a cover to cheat. But was he right? If she's cheating today, I, I have to just move on. It's make it or break it. Since you have been married, have you had physical sexual contact with anyone other than your husband? No. Your Honor, the voice analysis determined that she was being deceptive. We got together at a bar, so it, he can't really say anything. So, Casey, did the couple work through Ms. LeBeau's infidelity? Here's Mr. LeBeau with the answer. Well, when we got back home, we decided that, you know, it just wasn't fair for both of us just to keep going. But we have been doing counseling we're still best friends. I mean, let's face it, we have a, an amazing child together. Hopefully someday in the future, you know, we can, you know, reconcile and get our stuff back together for our son because he deserves it. Maybe someday we'll have a better update for y'all. I'm sorry to hear that the LeBeaux couldn't work it out, but it's great that they sought counseling and are working together for their son. I'm all for that, Mr. Cutler. But this next case really touched my heart. He, like I said, he doesn't come home at days, weeks at a time. I mean, and blaming me for his, him not being able to go pro or complete his football dream. You work hard all your life for this. You plan, you had, you plan your step all the way up. I mean, I work extra hard. I work harder than anybody else on the field. I felt like it went to waste. I'm tired. I'm tired of the stress. I'm tired of my kids asking me where their dad is. I'm, it's hard on me to just sit here and pay all the bills. I'm sorry, baby. You know that. Miss Pruitt was worried that her former college football player husband had become a star player with other women. Miss Pruitt was heartbroken, but was her husband really scoring with other women? We'll bring you the answer in more cases of marriage mayhem when Couples Court continues. Welcome back to a special update edition of Couples Court, Marriage Mayhem. I'll be the first to tell you that having a successful marriage takes work. Yes, it does, but it's worth it. Before the break, a couple was on the brink of divorce after starting their family in college. Mr. Caitlin's dreams of playing professional football were crushed, and his wife suspected his suspicious behavior meant that he was cheating. When I was pulling up the um, text messages and the social media page, it had naked pictures back and forth, both of them. She sent naked pictures to your husband, mm -hmm. and he sent naked pictures back to her? Yes. And you know him? Yes. Okay, Mr. Mr. Catlin. Listen, it's just nothing like that. We, we, she's a friend of another friend. That's how we met, okay? Okay, uh, but what? 
<laughs> wait a minute, wait. It don't matter how you met. The question the naked is pictures, why? I have no, I have no idea what that is. I don't. You know your husband I naked. Say, I say, I know naked. him naked. I saved the pictures. And when he pulled up in that van, his clothes was outside, and I was waiting for him. During your ten-year relationship, have you ever had physical sexual contact with anyone other than your wife? What was his response? Mr. Callan made an admission. He said yes. Tell your wife what you need to tell her. I was going through things at the time. I wanted to center her attention on me. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I went and found her somewhere. When well, he was gone, I wasn't cheating. I worked. I worked my butt off for my family. I applaud Mr. Caitlin for finally owning up to his mistakes. Yeah. But has he changed his ways? His wife sent us this update. Me and Marcus, it wasn't going to work out. We decided to just part our ways. I think that's best for me and my kids. I've learned I deserve better. So I thank you for everything you did for me. And I appreciate you. Mr. Cutler, it's unfortunate that Ms. Pruitt and Mr. Caitlin could not work it out but I hope they continue to co-parent peacefully and be a positive example for their children. Up next, the Wanlins were more than just partners in life. Like us, they were also partners at work. However, when money went missing, their work relationship went out the window and Mayhem took over their marriage. I was going in our office to pay bills and money was missing, like 200 here, 300 there. There's no explanation for this money. So what do you think he was doing with the money? I don't I guess he was, I don't know if he was paying for somebody's apartment. I don't know if he was buying her jewelry. I don't know what he uh, was doing. No, money was not missing. I've never cheated on her. I gotta pay a server's tips at the end of the night. I gotta pay them in cash. He was standing at the door and a pretty young girl came walking around the corner and just I didn't walked think she up was that pretty, him. Your Honor. And you think, okay, there's something going on right there. It looked there. like she was there to either say, look, either me or her, or, <laughs> well, um, you know, whatever. And then she said, well, I'm here, I want to talk to the owner. The girl that approached was wearing a white shirt and black pants, which in New Orleans means you're a server. And so when she came up, I correctly assumed, I said, are you looking for a job? And she's like, yeah. Did she actually come to work at the restaurant? She said, no, she did not. Okay. Absolutely. All right, well, that was a good choice. You asked Mr. Wanlin, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone other than your wife, Cheryl, in the four years you have been married? What was his response? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? Your Honor, the lie detector determined that he was being truthful. Yeah. I was so happy Mr. Wanlin was telling the truth, but was it enough to repair their marriage? Let's see what they have to say about their current situation. Hey, y'all, um, just gonna provide a little update for you guys. Uh, it's all great to be baby here in New Orleans, so, uh, you know, being fully exonerated by the head of the FBI polygraph department, I guess I couldn't have been cleared by a higher source except God himself, so I'm really grateful for you guys and for what y'all do. Y'all just have a blast every day at y'all's job, and you know, that was really an example to us, and we hope we can be that example to other people. So thank you for helping us get there. Thank you. That was so sweet. We appreciate it, and we are wishing you much happiness and much success. Well, in any partnership, there are rules of engagement. Rule number one for this next couple should have been do not have sex with another man in a car in front of your house. What? I go downstairs and I knock on the car and that's when I find my wife cheating with another guy. Wow. I was blankly, really, deliberately disrespecting him. Like, I'm not even really? gonna lie or try to cover it up. And that's the only way he paid attention to me. I have concerns if my daughter is mine. I just, I need to, I need to sleep at night. I need answers. So, when he took you back, what kind of promises did you make to him? Um, I promised him I would never sleep with nobody else. Miss Dixon was asked, when you returned home wearing no panties, did you have sexual intercourse with another man? What was Ms. Dixon's response? She said no. What did the polygraph reveal? The polygraph determined that she was being truthful, Your Honor. Thank you. That's only one. Thank you. That's only one.
I can't believe Miss Dixon was telling the truth. I have to admit, I was utterly surprised. I agree, but that wasn't our last question. Catch the conclusion of this outrageous case and an update on where the two are now when Couples Court returns. Stay tuned. We're back for the conclusion of this special episode of Couples Court. Today, we're taking a look back at couples whose nuptial agreements may have become null and void after leaving our courtroom. The union between Mr. Hunt and Ms. Dixon dissolved into chaos after he caught her in a car in front of their home having sex with another man. Too much. The trust was gone out of their marriage, and Mr. Hunt also wanted to know if the other man could have fathered his wife's baby. Let's go to the results. Ms. Dixon was asked, other than the one time you admitted to cheating during your marriage, have you had physical sexual contact with any man other than your husband? What was her response? She said, no, Your Honor. Lie. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that she was being Deceptive, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Dixon. Ms. Dixon. Do you have something you want to share? I haven't did anything. Well, the results indicate you were being deceptive when you answered that. Okay. Are you being deceptive know. now? No, I'm not. We can lead you to the water, but we can't make you drink it. Ms. Dixon was asked, could your youngest daughter be fathered by someone other than your husband? Your Honor, Ms. Dixon made it an admission and she said, yes. Mr. Hunt was crushed, but did he try once again to forgive and forget? Let's take a look. And my plans for the future, our future, is to grow closer as a family, to grow closer in our marriage, and to just move forward. And, and I would like to thank the Cutlers. Thank you, Cutlers. Thank you, guys. I'm so glad that Mr. Hunt and Ms. Dixon recognized that they had to fix their own issues before they could learn to truly open up to one another. Correct. We're wishing you and your family the very best. Well said, love. Today, we're taking a look back at some of the most outrageous women this courtroom has ever seen. Now, it's been said that well-behaved women rarely make history. And the woman in our first case is known for being a bad girl. Was she cheating or was she just doing what made her famous? If I text you at 6 o'clock and you read the message at 6.02, but you reply back at 9 p.m., it's a problem with that. I was at a booking. Actually, I can't no, have my actually, phone. the situation that I'm talking about. This is about. why you don't okay, date a bad girl. They, 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 we might as well talk to each other because they're not talking to each other. They're not even here. <laughs> well, so how you doing? They have got trust <laughs> issues out the wazoo. Nobody even knows she's in a relationship. She won't even post me on her social media. Everybody knows about her on my end. Because my fans are crazy, and I don't want him to go through that. AKA I cop want to keep him safe from all AKA the, the bad end of being a celebrity. It's hard. And you're saying, Unequivocally, you're not cheating. No. That is I why. I want some of that, and I can't even get that. So I'm just like, I don't know what to do. And that's why this court gets to the truth. Let's get to it. You asked Miss Monet, since you began dating Mr. Johnson, have you had physical sexual contact with any other man? What was her response to that question? She said no. The lie detector determined that she was being deceptive. <laughs> What? Miss Monet? I mean, I had some strippers shake on me a little bit a few times, but, like, I never, like, had, like, se no, I'm being dead serious. I bet you're wondering if Miss Monet is still up to her bad girl ways or has she brought it down a notch. Here's what Mr. Johnson had to say about their relationship. Since appearing in the couple's court, our relationship has grew tremendously. Um, we learned to communicate more effectively, like the colors told us we should. Um, oh, my only thing was, you know, I'm still going through a few problems with Kiana um, as far as her responding to my texts or calls how I want her to. But as far as everything else, we've definitely been good. Well, it sounds like Mr. Johnson wants to hear from his bad girl a little more often. A long-distance romance has its challenges, and maybe it's time for Mr. Johnson to decide if he's going to love her or lose her. I agree. 
Now, DC, I know how much you love shoes. Yes. And I don't have a problem with that. Thank you. And over the years, I've even contributed to your collection. True. But I know I would have some real issues if I found out that your shoes were coming from some sugar daddy. What? She telling me that uh, she don't have nothing going on with her sugar daddy. I'm not gonna turn down money, I'm not gonna turn down shoes, and I don't have to do anything for it. Did the sugar daddy buy the shoes you're wearing today? No, but he's reimbursing me. All right, let me see what that looks like. <laughs> oh, nice. What did you have to do to get those shoes? Nothing. I just take a picture in the shoe. Nothing in life is free. Ain't nothing in life Okay, he has a foot fetish. He likes pictures of feet and shoes. Even if we believe you that he hasn't cashed in yet, he's waiting. Has he ever propositioned you? Yes. So, yeah. it, there it is. I just need to know if I'm wasting my time here. You know, I, I got a goal to be married before I'm 30, because my 20s, I, I said I'm going to play my whole 20s. It's time for me to get married when I'm 30. But you're not going to get married to somebody I'm not who doesn't you. love you and who has a sugar daddy on yeah. the side. Yeah, she act she, she like she don't want to get serious. She want to play, play like, you know, like she's still in okay. college or something. I can't do that. A member of my team performed a forensic voice analysis of Miss Howard. Have you ever had physical sexual contact with the man who sends you shoes? No. All right. Your Honor, the voice analysis determined that she was being truthful. So, Cutler, it turns out Miss Howard was only getting shoes from her sugar daddy. Now, you're probably wondering, has she given up her shoe kick or is the sugar daddy still kicking around? Since leaving court, um, things have gotten a little bit better. I have stopped talking to the shoe guy since he said it was a big deal. I would say we're on a road to recovery. So we'll see how it goes. Bye, guys. It sounds like the sugar daddy is gone, and Miss Howard is moving on with her relationship. So let's move on to the next case. All right. I know that my girlfriend is cheating, and I'm just here to prove it. I all need right. to know once and for all if we're going to move forward or move on. I'm here to prove my innocence. I'm not cheating on her. I never have. So I don't even know why all this is coming up. So in your court papers, you say that you have a trunk of evidence to support your position. Yes, ma'am. A ma trunk. OK, don't so this brush, brush incident. I know this brush very well. You know why? Because I bought this brush for her. There's blonde hair in this brush, and it's in the passenger seat. I have um, this bikini, OK, with the black straps. Now, very easy to see with black was blonde hair all tangled in this. Now I'm like, oh, blonde hair again. So Coincidence or? Double strike with the blonde hair. I understand. I understand. This trunk is getting full of evidence. Yes. OK, lipstick. I do not believe that she would change her lipstick or even wear any to go drive, but change it twice. Again, her people sit in the back seat. These were found in the front seat. I did have that one color on, the nude color. OK. However, I obviously had a passenger in the front seat. It wasn't looking good for Miss Miller. So did Miss Caruso decide to love her or lose her? We'll have that update for you and more when we continue. Welcome back to another special update episode of Couples Court. You know, Mr. Color, men are always getting a bad rap for being cheaters. I know, and that's why we're leveling the playing field today and taking a look back at cases where women are in the hot seat. Before the break, we brought you the case of Caruso versus Miller. Ashley Caruso unloaded the most incriminating lineup of evidence against one woman I've ever seen. But you know what they say, if the bikini top doesn't fit, you must acquit. Uh, I don't think that's how it works here, but let's see what our expert had to say. The lie detector determined that she was being deceptive, Your Honor. Ah! Ah, so you like blondes, huh? <laughs> We've been going through this for months, so it's like... If you're um, cheating on me behind my back, you are not trying with me in my face. When I'm trying you're with being you... Deceitful. When I'm with you and I'm trying, you don't try. That didn't go so well. I'm not sure I even want to see this update. They're probably still arguing. Right. Hi, I'm Ashley Caruso. I was in court with Kayla Miller, my girlfriend at the time. And since we've left court, we're no longer together, but we are still friends. And I am so thankful 
that the Cutlers were able to help us in our relationship, but more so in our friendship because our friendship has grown. Although our relationship has ended, I think our friendship has grown. I admit I was pleasantly surprised. I guess there are times when it's better to be friends than lovers. In this next case, Christopher Davis wanted to marry his girlfriend, but he couldn't shake the feeling that she was cheating. I have had disturbance at my household where people are knocking on my windows. We were sitting in the room, just laying there, and all you heard was a Why would sweat. I bring somebody You to think the they house? doing a knock-knock to get the boom-boom? Yeah. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> like, when I first met her, she already was in a relationship that was rocky when oh. she was jumping What'd into a relationship mean? with me. Well, you know how you get them, how you lose you them, Mr. Them? Cutler. Yeah. Yeah. And if you find out she is cheating? Yes, I'm done, y'all. Was Ms. Dorns cheating, or did Mr. Davis have it all wrong? We'll have the answers for you and more when Couples Court continues. Hello, and thank you for joining us for another special update episode of Couples Court. Before the break, we were revisiting the case of Davis versus Dorn. Christopher Davis felt his fiance was cheating and refused to marry her. And Ms. Dorns was fed up with the accusations. Ms. Dorns was asked, since being in a relationship with Mr. Davis, have you had sexual intercourse with anyone other than your fiance, Mr. Davis? What was her response? She said no. The lie detector determined she was being truthful. Yes. And I just want to know, Oh, would you? Don't do that. I just want to know, would don't you please that. marry me? Don't do that. Don't do that. Need some counseling. Oh, man, she shot him down. Yes, she did. But since then, has she changed her mind? Ms. Dorn sent us this update. Since leaving court, Chris and I are currently separated. Um, I've learned to love myself and not be worried about people's judgmental statements. I would like to thank the Cutlers for allowing me to prove my innocence, and I'm not the person who he thought I was, so thank you. Wow, I guess the accusations finally took a toll on the relationship. Yes, it did. Now, in this next case, Matthew Rosenswag brought his snake wrangler girlfriend to court to find out if she was slithering around with another man. Well, she did pick up his new job as a reptile assistant. Yeah, she's a snake handler now. I'm good hey. with wrangling snakes. She says she's working. Okay. But, but you know, where does she go for three hours when the phone's off and all, and all of this stuff? And now I'm just over it because I've been having to defend myself way too much. We went back to the house and uh, her phone was dead and she needed a charger. She told me to go look through her purse. So I went to go look for the charger in her purse and I found three Magnum condoms. And I said, what are these? Where did these come from? And Listen, I went to the doctor to start a new birth control. I grabbed a handful of condoms for us. The results don't lie, but the question is, do you? Hmm. We'll find no. out. Have you had sexual intercourse with any man besides your boyfriend, Matthew? No. What did the forensic analysis determine? The voice analysis determined that she was being deceptive, Your Honor. All right. <laughs> this is ridiculous. It is. Well, he was right. Miss Rankin was cheating. Now, since court, has Mr. Rosenzweig decided to love her or lose her? Our staff touched base with Mr. Rosenzweig, and to my surprise, they're still together. What? He said that coming to court helped Ms. Rankin open her eyes, and she's getting back to being the woman that he fell in love with. Well, I just hope she continues down that path. Up next, newlywed Isiana Bland came to court armed with evidence of her wife's possible affairs. Right now, we're separated in two different homes. We on the edge of divorce. She's one foot in and one foot out. I'll go through her Facebook. When I go through her Facebook, her ex comments on one of her statuses she made. I end up talking to her, seeing her or whatever, but... So you actually saw your ex? Yeah. So did y'all hook up? Like what? Like, you girl. <laughs> you know what we asking. No, nah, we ain't had sex. Girl. We ain't had sex. I was All born right. at night, but I wasn't born last <laughs> night. <laughs> All right. No, no, no. You asked Miss Cleonia Bland, on the day with your ex-girlfriend, did you two have physical sexual contact? What was her response to that question? 
she made an admission. She said yes. All right. But to you, Ms. Bland, the question before you now is, regardless of how far she went, what are you going to do with this relationship? I don't know. That confession left Miss Isiana Bland at a loss for words. So since then, has she decided to love her or lose her? I really appreciate everything the colors have done for us because they have really made a major impact on my marriage. Like, I don't think that we'd be together still now if it wasn't for the colors. So thank you, and we still have our Tuesday night dates. <laughs> I can't believe it. The Blands are working it out. I know I enjoy our date nights, and I recommend that couples set aside some time just for themselves, just to enjoy each other. Date nights are a good thing. Right. When you're with your significant other. Well. But in this next case, a date night went way sideways hmm. when a woman took an overnight business trip and left her boyfriend at home. OK. She went on a business trip to Vermont, OK? Business trip. But she was tired from the flight, whatever, her phone was out. And I looked at her phone, and I saw a picture with her with somebody else. Oh. Wow. Yeah. It's, yeah. And so... What's when everybody want to say now? To What's everybody want to say now? I didn't think it was cheating, because it was with another woman. You don't think anything's cheating, no matter who it's with. She was on some military dating site. She swore off all dating sites, OK? Another time she was passed out, I saw she still had the military app on her phone. Ms. Sashinoff saying, I'm looking for a man who can take care of me and enjoy the finer things in life. Like she was free. Like she was free. <laughs> and, she, and she cheated on you in the she past. She had a baby in between our relationship with another man. Because oh, you broke up with me. A baby oh. with another man. Wow, a baby with another man and a risque night with another woman? Stay tuned for the conclusion to this case and one powerful update when we return. Welcome back to the conclusion of this special update episode of Couples Court, Love Her or Lose Her. Today, we've been taking a look back at some cases involving our most outrageous female cheaters in question. In this final case, Albert Monero found out his girlfriend loved to experiment but he didn't know if she was ready to change her ways. Right, and that's why he turned to our court for help. We enlisted a former military interrogator to get the truth out of his girlfriend. I did not meet with anyone that I was speaking to on that website, Your Honor. Have you met any men that... <laughs> Did, have you met with men that you didn't meet on this website? No, Your Honor. Well, that picture said all, the right. profile says it all. She ain't gotta say nothing else. She did admit to me that she went to Vermont and she had some relations with this woman, but that there was a man involved. So as a person who's conducted hundreds of interrogations, I do believe she's still cheating. She does not want to be in a committed relationship, but she does want to remain best friends. Uh, I loved you. Mr. Monero was hurt, but was he really done with Ms. Samsonoff? He recently sent the court this update. Since uh, leaving court, Sonia and I have broken up. I've learned that I, I need to be stronger. I need to love myself more. Uh, these things have to happen before I can get into another relationship. The Cutlers, I... You know, what I took from them was just seeing them united, working together, communicating together, even though it was only for a day. Witnessing that really gave me an understanding of what I need to see in my partner and in myself when I'm in another relationship in the future. It just goes to show, every loss isn't always a loss. Sometimes when one door closes, another one opens. Right. Hopefully this will be a new beginning for the both of them. 